Hello world and welcome back to another episode of Ars Nouveau where today we're going to be going over a lot of handy useful mechanics that you can get inside of the vanilla base mod. The first thing we're going to get is the digital storage function of Ars Nouveau and this is by using the storage lectern. Inside an arcane enchanting apparatus we're going to need one lectern and four chests to get ourselves our storage lectern. Now, as you can see, it requires uh, connected inventories and bookworms, but by itself inside we have the GUI. At the top here, uh, we'll have where we have our items inside our inventories, and inside here we have our crafting area. You can uh, also do this button, I believe, to rotate your um, things in case you have a full craft where you place it all in the center and then you really messed up and did it on the corners. I know I do that all the time. You also have this little book here which gives you all of these quick recipes, just like in the vanilla maze game, like just like so. Uh, you can also shrink this down if you so wish, but get rid of all that first. You can shrink this all down to get a wider view, and as well as that inside of here, you can sort by amount or alphabetically, as well as that you can do ascending or descending, and then the last thing is synced or non-synced, and what this means is that if you have your JEI enabled, if it syncs, it will sync with your JEI down here. Simple enough. You also have a scroll bar on the side, obviously, if it's filled up enough. But this isn't as simple as just simply placing blocks inside. As it says, we need to actually uh, connect inventories first. Now, in order to connect inventories, we have to get a bookworm. Now, I said a little while ago in a previous tutorial that bookworms are currently disabled. Well, there's been an update and now they're no longer disabled, which is very, very nice. So let's show you how you actually get this. First, you're going to need a Tablet of Awakening. This is made with a flourishing archwood log. I believe you can do any archwood log though. Uh, or four different types of the archwood sapling. We've got blazing, cascading, flourishing and vexing. And then four of the source gems to get you the Tablet of Awakening. Now, I believe we've used the Tablet of Awakening before, but this is done on a Ritual Brazier. However, this time, what you need to do is actually augment the Ritual Brazier with a standard book and quill from the vanilla game. All you have to do is throw this in. You can right-click on it with it in your hand as well, but it may bring up the GUI. And then all you have to do is simply activate it by right-clicking it with a bare hand. This will give you your Bookworm Charm. Now, unlike the other charms with the other familiars in the game, you can't just right-click this on the ground. This fella is pretty much only useful on uh, this right here with the storage lectern. Uh, you may still be able to use it on other things later on, as this guy is very handy um, in earlier versions of the game. However, in this version, he's pretty much only used for the storage lectern. So take this information with a grain of salt. It may change over time. But as you can see here, we've got our little bookworm here. He is connected here, and he is connected to one inventory, which is this chest right here, filled with many different items, and you will see that inside of here. Now, in order to actually have this all set up, you are going to need to get yourselves a Dominion Wand. This is how you link everything. And what you'll simply do is have to shift, click, right click on an inventory, and then shift, right click on here. As you can see, I've just removed it. So I want to obviously put that back. So now I can see all these items, and it does uh, in multi stack over here, as you can see. Now, for every bookworm you have on here, you can connect eight different inventories. However, that can be increased. All you have to do is take your bookworm charm and right click on the storage um, lectern to get another eight, as you can see here. So we have as many bookworms as we so wish. They are uh, they can get a little bit entity cramming like this. So but as um, how they work is when you take one of them, one of these blocks out, as you can see, it opens the chest and it sort of gives it to you. However, the way you put items back in is a little bit different, which we'll show very shortly. Obviously, you can put them in here directly, and a bookworm will actually pick up the item and go and fly it over to the chest. So you can have your chest further away, and it will actually go put it in these ones instead. Uh, however, obviously, you have to manually uh, add every single chest, which is a little bit tedious, but it must be done. Now, moving on very slightly, this is a quick tangent. We will be going back to the lecterns, but sticking on the bookworms for now, if we use the tablet of binding, which we've used before for our other familiars, this is how we are actually going to be able to get ourselves our bookworm familiar, as you can see here. So if we have our lectern, obviously we're going to have to put down a charm. If we activate our tablet of binding and then right click it, what this fella is going to do is turn into our familiar and then you can simply claim him. Now inside the book, when you have your familiar sector, you can uh, basically get this guy to spawn. And what he essentially is, is a magnet, essentially. He will follow you around, and while he is active, any items that drop on the ground, this guy will pick up and put it in your inventory, as well as any XP as well. However, if uh, you drop any items, he won't actually pick them up and put them back in your inventory, so you will have to manually pick those up. 
Now, it says there's a tooltip inside of the Worn book, and I agree with this as well. You can actually do a familiar summons keybind. Uh, I By default, it is unbound, but I have set mine to M, so summon and dispel familiar on M. That is not the default. You'll have to set it, and then on M, you'll get rid of him, and then uh, you can spawn him back, uh, which is great because you may not want your sort of quote-unquote magnet on all the time. Now going back to the storage le lecterns, let's set up a whole new inventory uh, system from scratch here. So first we're going to need to get ourselves a bookworm as we see here. And we want to start obviously putting different inventories on into this system. Now all of these uh, chests here, they do have a slight uh, amount of inventories inside. And this guy's going to start flying over towards them because that's going to be his essential hub now. And inside of here we can see all of these now for a better uh understanding of how it all works if i put this in here this guy is going to fly over and he's going to pick the stuff up or bring it to it it's a little bit bugged because obviously he's slow but that's how it works now what if you don't want to actually interact with this all the time what you can do is have a unbound chest next to your storage lectern and this is going to allow your bookworm to actually automatically put things in so if I put this stone that we got here earlier, what's going to happen is the bookworm's going to come over to the chest, pick it up, and then put it in one of these inventories, which is very nice. Now, there is something else we can do. Uh, say we obviously we don't know and we can't directly interact with each of these chests individually. Maybe you want to come over here at some point and actually go through them manually. However, you could get end up with a box of random like you see here. What you can do is using an anvil is actually label your chests. So I think we should have a chest here called subscribe as you see here. And this guy is now going to be labeled. What happens now is if we actually link this chest to our storage lectern, what's going to happen is that we'll get a new tab down here. So we have the all items tab that's appeared, which has obviously got everything. But then we've got the sus subscribes tab. So I could put more stone in here and then I could say put diorite in here and andesite. And all of that is going to go into this chest over here as you see fit. Obviously, the bookworm is still technically moving things over, but uh, that's more of a visual thing here. They've already instantly gone inside. Now, there are some downsides to the storage lectern. The storage lectern can only work within a 30 block radius, so it can only connect up to in in entities or into inventories rather up to a 30 block radius. However, your access to the storage lectern can be extended. So say you are 30 blocks away like we have over here. We have got another storage lectern. This guy currently has nothing inside. So how about we set this guy up as well? We have ourselves a storage lectern here. Let's, uh, we've got some inventories here that have some stuff inside. So how about we just add these? Now this is out of the 30 block radius and is currently a completely separate thing here. Now in order to link it, what we'd have to do is take your first storage lectern. This is going to be your subnet. And then the second one is going to be your main net. So if we hold uh, shift and right click here, or sorry, just ordinary right click, this will get your position set. Then we want to go to what we want to have as our main network. And then we want to uh, shift right click on that. Now that is linked. What we can do here is right click. Oh, but hang on. We haven't, we can't see what's over there. We can only see what's right here. What happens if we go over this side now? Oh, we can, we can see everything that's over there. See, this is the problem with the uh, storage lectern. You can't really have sub networks. At least I can't find a way to do it. Uh, so there's no way I can get that one over here to link over here. It can, it can only work one way. So I can access more inventories from further away. See, that is the only downside of this storage lectern. See, I can go even further away over here. This is way over 30 blocks and I can link this to this second lectern. And if I go back over here, I've now linked to the main network. But uh, I cannot actually see this as a subnet, unfortunately. Inside the book, it does actually recognize things as sort of subnets in the storage le uh, lectern. As it says here, you may also link a lectern to the main lectern in order to extend the view and access of the original lectern. These lecterns can be chained together indefinitely within, thir uh, within 30 blocks indefinitely. So you can go further and further away, but you can't actually make subnetworks that are all access. So you can have infinite view with this, but uh, you can't make subnetworks. So, I mean, you can get a lot of uh, inventory spaces in a 30 block radius of the original lectern. Uh, so you will have to have a central storage area. Now, the book does explain these items as well when it comes to the storage lectern. One is the archwood chest, which is essentially just the, uh, a chest. I don't really know. I think it's more an aesthetics thing. Uh, it's in the repositories um, section of the, of the book, but it doesn't really do anything. Uh, but this is a new item we have over here, repository itself. This is made with 
four end of any type of archer log and then four golden nuggets and this is a double chest size in one block now the problem with it is that we can obviously link this to our uh, our lovely storage network as we see over here uh, so we have some diorites in here now now we also can name this to give ourselves a new tab now the cool thing about the, the repository is that if you usually break a um a chest it will probably lose its name now it may not happen with a regular chest let's have a look here here we have got actually that does stay as subscribe however if we had ourselves our archwood chest and we named this it would not retain its name which can be good but it can't be at the same time so how about we name this uh then how about we name this heat one not the earth and then we'll get the repository and we'll name this uh yeet two So here, if we have this and this, we'll put uh, gravel in one and we'll put stone in the other. How about this? We've got yeet one and yeet two. We'll, we'll leak these two here, which is lovely. And then inside our inventory, we'll have yeet one, which is this, yeet two, which is this. Now, if we break the archwood chest, this is actually going to lose its uh, name. It's going to go back to archwood chest, which is a little bit annoying, but it can be helpful at times. With these, you want it to be the same, but in here, you might want it to actually get lost but uh, with the repository however what this is going to do is actually um retain its name which is very nice so it's going to be the same as a chest now the annoying thing here is that it does say these inventories are still connected however obviously it's clearly not um we only have one book one but if we do this as you can see we've reached the maximum number so you don't want to break anything without actually removing your uh, your link first otherwise things can break now obviously you can reset everything as well uh in creative mode i'm going to do this now because it's going to be easier if you actually end up breaking your storage what's going to happen is all your bookworms they are going to turn back into their charms that you can just pick up and then you would have to basically start the process over again so really make sure you remove everything first now let's step away from bookworms and storage lecterns and such for a little while and get into something a little bit more fun, the containment jar. We've shown this off a little bit in the past with the uh, Drigme setup that we have over here as uh, Drigmes are able to interact with these jars. Now the cool thing is though, we haven't shown all that the, these jars can actually do. Now we know that we can actually capture any type of mob we want inside of the containment jar using a ritual brazier and the tablet of containment now you do need to have a bit of source for it to constantly run however you can use it just once without any source nearby but let's really go in depth on how we can do this a little bit more if you haven't watched that video we're going to cover it a little bit more right now so obviously we've got the containment jar here to make the ritual uh, or the tablet of containment for the ritual brazier it's just like so and then all we can do here is that if we get ourselves something say like a chicken here uh, what we can do is when the ritual brazier is activated nearby uh, it's going to allow us to put this mob inside of uh, this jar here so all we need is a little bit of source but the source isn't exactly necessary for the first time craft so we activate this here it's going to await activation you right click it with your off hand or empty hand and it will put the chicken inside of the containment jar now as you can see the effects are no longer running however if we had ourselves a bit of source nearby the um ritual area of effect will continue to run now there are many different mobs that actually have utilities when you actually capture them inside the containment jar. I'm pretty sure you can capture any mob inside the game in these containment jars, but these ones specifically have a use. So let's go over those. First we have a villager. Now the villager, as you can see here, this guy is a librarian. Now you must make sure that before you contain them, they actually have a job first. So this guy, he was near a lectern, I captured him, and now he gives me these uh, enchants. Now, Obviously, you want to make sure that he has the correct trade that you want first before you contain him. Uh, otherwise, it could end up messing up. Um, now, if you ever do find that you've messed up and you want to actually have a different one, what you can do is actually use the uh, dispel on the chest here, or not on the chest, on the jar, uh, and he will actually come out, as you can see here. And he's lost his um, thing because there's no lectern nearby. But yeah, that's how that works. 
Uh, second, you have got the uh, goblin here, the piglin rather, and if you throw gold to him, he will actually spit out a whatever he decides to give you. <laughs> That's pretty much how that works. However, it didn't work right there because we actually have the allay. The allay is uh, pretty cool as it is able to pick up any items within a five block radius and then put them inside an adjacent chest. As you can see here, we've got some other items right here. So I'm going to break this very quickly just so uh, I can do that. There you go. He's actually going to be able to trade now. And then when he gives us stuff, it could be anything from obviously the loot tables. So I'm going to put this chest back down because this guy is going to obviously pick up all these other ingredients that we have over here. So one thing we have here is the sheep. The sheep is going to be able to actually give you wool when you shear it. And if it's got grass underneath its containment jar, it will eat the grass and then regain its wool. So you continue to shear it. Uh, chickens, they will occasionally lay eggs, which is why the LA is picking them up slowly over time. And then with the cow, you can use a empty bucket here and in order to get yourselves a load of milk. I'm not sure if this can be auto-crafted. Um, you can probably use sight click with a, with a right clicker or something to get milk automatically, but I don't know if you have any other type of mob that can do that or any other type of mod that can do any sort of right clicking, then you can do that as well. Uh, the mushroom is very similar. If you use a bowl, you are going to be able to get infinite mushroom stew, which is pretty nice. Not a bad early game, or I say early game, but uh, oh, hello. Uh, not a bad uh, source of food, to be honest, where it's uh, completely free. Uh, the next, you have got the uh, puffer fish. The puffer fish here, is, as you can see, it's already sort of working. Um, Whenever a mob is nearby, it doesn't matter which type of mob, it's going to inflate and then send a redstone signal. So I don't really want these fellas to be uh, near here. And um, we just got some Corel tombstone achievements there. As you can see, the uh, puffer fish is still active for a short amount of time while the mobs are actually not in the area. But eventually this guy will puff down and then we will lose the redstone signal. Uh, next, we have got the uh, our dummy. Now, in order to get a dummy inside of here, you are going to need to have the dummy spell, which we have uh, not actually got made. Uh, the dummy spell we'll put down here. Uh, we are going to have this as a projectile. And then over here, we have got the summon decoy. And then all you would have to do is do your uh, little containment jar here. And you, if you summon your decoy inside the area of effect, you will get put inside of the jar. Now, as it says over here, this guy, he is going to uh, have mobs get attracted to him. So if I have this here, there you go, the puffer fish is just finished here. If I put down this guy, the spider is attracted to the dummy and is going to uh, we're not try and attack it, but it just gets sucked in like a magnet. Next, we have the frog. The frog is actually going to eat any nearby slime that is nearby, as you can see here. I'm not sure quite of its area effect, but as you can see, it ate it and turned it into a bit of a slime drop. Next, you have the panda. Now, I would actually recommend uh, all the quest book or the or the warn book rather. It actually says to use a baby panda, but I couldn't get one to spawn and I wasn't going to go find one. But baby pandas, they have a chance of sneezing. And when they do sneeze, they will drop you slime balls or rather there's a chance to drop slime balls. If your baby panda is sick, however, there is m even more of a chance of getting a greater amount of slime balls. So you want to use a baby panda inside. And the last one is actually the ender dragon, would you believe? The ender dragon, if you write Right click on it with a glass bottle it's actually going to give you some dragon's breath as you've seen here and i really need to clean my inventory now something to note here as well uh when you do go into the end to try and claim this ender dragon i recommend you don't actually you you actually kill the first ender dragon so you have the portal activate otherwise obviously you've got no way for the portal to activate you can dispel this person out of course i'm not going to do it here because otherwise that would be a disaster however when i did this in testing and i did actually go and catch the first ender dragon another one naturally spawned which i didn't know if that was a thing to do with this mod or if that's a vanilla mechanic but essentially i captured the first one that i did when i went into the ender and then after about five minutes another um ender dragon actually spawned for me to kill which was very interesting for me to discover now that's everything to do with containment but how about we go to something a little bit similar and this is the display case the display case is made with an observer three archwood planks and the rest is glass and this is going to be able to give us a redstone signal based on an inventory's item now what do i mean by this here we've got ourselves a display case this is linked to this chest over here now inside of here we have a chest, some redstone, archwood logs and some stone and we have ourselves an a, a allow item inventory thing here. So as you can see we can change the amount that we actually want it to emit at. Uh, as you can see it does obviously 
that amount <laughs> it's set to a bit high if i hold sorry if it's by default though let's take this off if it's by default this is how you're going to get it it's going to be looking for air at the moment what you're going to need is the dominion wand to actually link this to an inventory so we've held shift here and then right click here it's now going to detect anything that's inside it's detecting air at the moment i'm not really sure how that works but apparently it is in order for actually you to set a whitelist you need to have your item in your hand and right click on it and it will set redstone dust and look for it in that inventory at the moment there is no redstone dust in the inventory so it's not setting anything out as you can see it says Ad admit when it's less than zero so what we can do here is put this inside and then it's going to find the full amount as you can see here what i did before obviously is change the amount so if i have this set to say eight what i can do is if i have just seven in here what it will do is omit for when there's anything over nine as you can see here so if we added a couple more so there's eight and then there's nine if i go 10 it should start missing a redstone signal as you can see here now you can also invert this as well if you hold shift and right click it will invert it so if there's more than nine uh, it won't emit a redstone signal so if i start taking this out it now goes to eight and it emits a redstone signal again now as it was in the beginning what i can do is to get ourselves a uh, a parchment here or rather an allow item scroll and this is what i have pre-linked to chests archwood planks and redstone so i can slap that in there and now it's going to work for things inside of here as you can see so let's change this back to how it was and obviously it's emitting a redstone signal now now something else that's really cool about this display case as well that is you can actually link a whole um storage lectern to your display case which is very nice so as you can see there's nothing in the inventory i've got a little setup set up here so we've got inside here absolutely nothing but we obviously know this can detect redstone. If I put redstone inside of our inventory, it's now going to detect that there's some in there. Obviously, you can uh, change this. Oops, didn't mean to do that. You can obviously set this to have as many different numbers as you want to. You, I don't know how far you can go. If you hold shift, you can go up by bigger increments, as you can see here. So this is a good way of setting a limit or making sure you have things constantly in stock. I'm not sure if there's a maximum you can do on this. Moving on, next we have got the Potion Diffuser. Made inside the enchanting apparatus, we're going to need three gold, three archwood planks, and a campfire. And this is a way of actually applying your potions to a given area. So what we have here is a diffuser. This is linked to a potion jar that is completely filled up with instant health damage too. Now, if we have this inside of here, what's going to happen is that our diffuser here is going to take some of this potion every 10 minutes is going to take one chunk of this potion and then every few seconds while it has this potion it's going to apply the uh, potion effect to a given area as you can see here it doesn't happen rapidly so it can be used for a rather slow farm if you do use it in this way uh, but you can use it on something say like a potion swift this to give you speed while you're obviously in your base or whatever so this is basically a, a, a way of doing a constant top up but you can use it in this way as a farm if you slow wish Staying on the subject of potions, we have got the Potion Melder. This is also made in the enchanting apparatus. You need two blocks of gold, four blazes, and then two abjuration essence with a potion jar in the center. Now, the Potion, the, uh, potion Melder, what it's essentially going to do is going to join any two potions together and add their effects to get a new potion. So over here, we've got a potion of regeneration, it's called. But what it actually has is regeneration 2 and speed. That's because I've got a potion of swiftness and then a potion of regeneration. They're both linked together. They're being mixed in this melder to be making the potion of regeneration. Now, in order to link these, you're going to need the Dominion Wand. It's very simple. You just right click the position and set them into here. Now, I've already got this. So if I clear the connections by holding shift and right clicking on here, as you can see, it says that it needs two potion jars and it also needs to what needs to put it into a output here. So if we just simply right click this and put it on, so it says one of two. Then if I do the second one, it says two of two. And then if you right click and then shift right click on your potion of regeneration, that is going to be our output. So all you need to do now is actually give this a bit of source. So I'm going to use a creative source jar here. and We're going to place this down. And as you can see, it's going to start working. Now, as you may have noticed, that I've got a couple extra melders here. We've got a second set of melders here. This is making fire resistance and strength. And this is turning uh, into a potion of fire resistance, but it gives you fire resistance and strength. 
Now, something I should note here is that every time you do do this craft, it's going to take three units of potions. You can see we've got multiple of these plasma orbs going in. So it's going to go uh, from 84 down to 81 once it has crafted. So it takes three of this one, three of this one to just give us one of this one. So make sure you are have got enough to actually supply this. But as you can see, I've taken this even one step further. With these two augmented potions, you can actually join these two together as well and then make that into an even stronger potion. So as you can see here, we've got a potion of regeneration, which gives us regeneration 2 for 22 seconds, fire resistance, strength and speed all for 8 minutes. So you could literally, um, if you wanted to and made a big enough chain, you could put every single potion in the game, I'm sure, to put into one massive potion, which is absolutely insane then obviously because you've got your flasks as well which we went over in the previous episode you can get eight charges of this on your person at a time which is absolutely incredible moving back to brazes really really quickly we're not going to be going over all the rituals today that will probably be in the next episode but an item that we do have is the ritual brazier relay made with three manipulation essences and a ritual brazier this is a way of actually sending your brazier or uh, ritual to a given area as you see here all you have to do is link this with a dominion wand you simply just need to write Right click on the brazier and then hold shift and right click over here and then it will obviously uh, link together we currently have here our containment one so we've got some jars over here and if we put down some chickens they are going to end up inside of here except one's ended up with a uh, with uh one of these inside apparently now the last thing we have which is very nice the last mechanic we have is these scry crystals the scry crystals are made with an eye of ender and a source gem and they're very simply basically a camera so what i can do is right click on this and as you can see i've got my person here now i know i'm looking around here but uh what i can actually do is to move my camera around i use wasd as you see here to move my camera so i can't move my person but i can be in the view and still look at him so hello it looks like i'm on the news now and like i'm talking to you and giving you all the information i would never be a good news anchor would i no 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 to get out of this you just simply hold shift to get out of this now you can actually access this remotely however you don't have to be right here so all you're going to need is first you're going to need a piece of blank parchment and then you have to hold shift and right click on your scry eye to then bind your scroll this would use up your blank parchment but i'm in creative so it's kept me around now it says where it's bound to and it, that it's a cry eye uh, you can name this as well which i probably recommend for later on However, using the scroll itself, I'm right clicking right now, you can't just access it this way. You are going to need another item called the Scryer's Oculus. This is made in an enchanting apparatus. You're going to need a block of source gem, a diamond, an observer, and a spyglass with a eye of ender in the center. And this is going to give you your Scryer's Oculus. Placing this down, you are now going to be able to access your, your crystals. However, as you see here, you're going to need a, pe a um, pedestal here, and then you're going to have to put your new scroll onto that pedestal you can have multiple eyes linked to this all you're going to need to do is put more scrolls down on pedestals nearby but when you right click here what it's going to do is going to give you a wheel here of all the different scrolls you have nearby and all you have to do is click on the one that you want to look at and then you just simply use wasd again the same way you would before and then you have me over here hello all you have to do is left shift to get out of that now, something that's very cool, and it's an item that I skipped over last time when we were going over our trinkets, because I wanted to wait until now, and this is the Enchanter's Eye. This is made in the enchanting apparatus with four blaze powders and four end up pearls and the scry eye and this is going to give us the enchanter's eye this is going to allow us to basically do spells but from the eye right clicking it it doesn't do anything you have to set it first and you set this the way you would with anything else inside of the scribes table all you have to do is make any spell you want inside of here i recommend really using projectile ones because they're the best type really if you did self or um it wouldn't really work but you can do touch if something is directly in front of it so i have gone ahead and i've made a few ahead of time one of which is a uh, blink as we see here this is blink now uh, what i have to do here is this is going to fire directly out so i'm going to give myself a little wall here if i use blink here it's going to fire the jet and then as you can see i land on this block so this is a good way to teleport home um however this cannot be worked infinitely because in order for the scrying eyes to still work even though this will work the scrying eye will need to be chunk loaded. This is goes for both viewing it through a scryer's oculus as well as using it for spells. The scrying crystal needs to be chunk loaded for all of it to be activated. Now the other one I have here is touch and interact. Now this isn't bound 
to our scryers eye here. This is bound to another one that you may have spotted earlier in the video if you had a good keen eye. If I right click this here, what's going to happen is I am going to open up our storage lectern that we actually created earlier in the video. This has been placed down over here directly underneath this storage lectern right here and we've got the scryer's eye and this is going to allow us to wirelessly access our storage le lectern anywhere in the world provided that this is chunk loaded now the reason i have this underneath here and not on a wall is that because if a bookworm actually goes in between the scrying crystal and the storage lectern the spell would not work so if you have it this way there's no way that the uh, bookworm can get in the way but for now, guys, that is going to be everything when it comes to the mechanics inside of Ars Nouveau. There are a couple of things that are in Ars Elementum as well. Elementum? Elemental and Instrumentum. They added those two together there that we're going to be covering in later episodes. But next time, we're going to be covering all the rituals that you can do inside of Ars Nouveau. And that might actually be the very last vanilla-based uh, Ars Nouveau that we have. The rest is going to be purely add-ons, I think. Uh, but if this video helped you out in any way, shape or form, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It would really help me out and ring the bell button to stay notified when these videos go live. But until next time, guys, take care.